Dataverse has an image column type that you can use to store images that are related to a record. And if you choose to use this column type inside the confines of a model driven app, then it's very straightforward to add images and to retrieve them later inside of that app. But if you step outside of that model driven world and you want to use the images with your Canvas apps or with a Power Automate Flow, for example, then things get a little bit more complicated. So in this video, I'm going to look at how you can capture images into Dataverse and then use them again using Canvas Power Apps and Power Automate. Let's start over in Dataverse. So here I've got a new Dataverse table called Image Column Demo. And I'm just going to show you how to add a, um, an image to this. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on the plus here and I'm going to add a column called Image. I'm going to go ahead and change the type to, I'm going to come down to file and then change that to image. And I'm going to make this the primary image for this record. I'm just going to go ahead and save that. And from the model driven app perspective, if I just come into the forms for this table and take a look at my main form, you can see that by default, I don't have my image on there, but adding it is as simple as grabbing it and dragging it over. And now I have it there. I'm going to go ahead and save and publish this form. Then I can step back out of my form. I'm going to jump back into my table. I'm going to click on edit. Then I'm going to click on the little arrow next to new row and click new row using form. And once I've gone ahead and created a row, you can see I can now choose a file. And I'll go ahead and choose one of my thumbnails here. Click on open and then I have my image attached to my record. If you're enjoying this video and it adds value for you, please do remember to like the video and then subscribe to the channel so you can see the next one as soon as I release it. So from a model driven perspective, adding your image field and getting back the information is as straightforward as that. But let's now take a look at a Canvas app. So I've just got a basic Canvas app here and I can achieve exactly the same thing using an adder picture control. So you see I've got an adder picture control here um, and then I have an image which shows the image property of the uploaded image element of the adder picture control. Then I have a text box um, and then I have a button. And what this button does is it patches into my Dataverse table called Demo Table um, with the defaults of Demo Table and then adds in the uploaded image and the text associated with this box. So we'll just take a look at how this works. I'm gonna click on this. I'm going to add another thumbnail. You can see that immediately my thumbnail is, is over here. I'm gonna call this picture two, and then I'm gonna click on upload. If I X out of this, and I'm gonna jump out of my app for a second, and I'm gonna take a look at my table, and you can see that picture has been added in there. So let's jump back to the app. My next example is using a camera to take a photo. Um, so in this video earlier this week, I highlighted how to use a button to take a photo in a power app, but I'm not going to do that today. I just have this picture, this camera control here. I'm just going to hold Alt and take a photo. And you can see similarly to the last setup, I have an image here. I have my text box and then I have my upload button. And slightly differently to the way this worked before, I'm still patching the same table. Um, but with my image, I am now passing an object to it, which is full um, image one dot image and value image one dot image. And that's necessary to make this work. I can't just patch the, uh, the image value across this time. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. I'm going to put in picture two and I'm going to upload. Now let's jump out of this and take a look back at our table. And you can see I now have these two pictures. Oh, I actually called them both picture two, but that's okay. Um, I've got these two pictures in my table. So that's really the two different scenarios that you might have of adding an image 
to a Dataverse table from a Canvas Power App. Uh, now let's take a look at accessing those images. So back in my app, I have two ways of looking at these images. So I have a gallery here where I have just uh, the table. So if we just take a look at this whole gallery, you'll see that I'm just pulling the data from demo tables. And then usefully I can grab that image by just saying this item dot image. So I can just very easily get that image out into my Canvas app. Or equally over here, I have a drop down which is driven from the demo tables table. It's showing the primary column here, the name column. And then down here, I just have an image control and the value of the image is drop down one dot selected dot image. So using those images once you've got them into Dataverse is really straightforward in your Canvas apps. So now we've looked at how to add images using a Power Apps Canvas app and how to access them in the same Canvas app. Let's take a look at this from the perspective of Power Automate. So I've created a manual flow here which just goes ahead and lists the rows from my demo tables table and just selects the column, the image column. Um, and then I've got a composer action down here that takes the values that we get out of this list rows action in order to take a look at what data we get out. So let's take a look at what we get. So we just take a look at our compose action. You'll see that when we get out our image, what we're getting is um, basically a very long string, which is the data connected with our image. Um, so we're not getting anything that's immediately usable in Power Automate. So say we wanted to take that image and send it to someone in Teams, for example. How might we go about that? So in this example, we've added a couple of steps and there's an action for Dataverse, which is download a file or image. And we can just pass to that the row ID uh, that we want on our table and tell the, uh, the action what column we want the image from, and then it will grab that image. Um, so what I've done here is I've got my same compose action here, um, just showing me what's coming out of the, the body of this action. Um, and also down here, I have a further compose that's showing me what happens when I use the data URI function on that output. So let's just take a look at what happens here. So you can see the first compose, what we get out of our download a file or an image is this output, which gives us a content type, um, which isn't a particularly useful content type from the point of view of grabbing an image, um, and then the same output that we had previously. And then if we look at our second compose action, um, so what the data URI function allows us to do um, is to compose um, an output that we would then use in something like a, a source um, property for an image, for example, in HTML. But in this case, what you're seeing is while we have something that is encoded base64, which is what we want, what we're not seeing is an image. So we don't have this encoded as an image. So it wouldn't be possible to directly pass this along to um, say an image tag in an HTML email or in Teams, for example. So in this example, I've added a couple of steps. I've just added a step to get my profile for the current user and I've added a post into Teams. And you can see that in the post into Teams, we are able to compose in HTML. And I'm sending the outputs of this compose to, which is the data URI function. Um, so what this would generally do is create for us um, an HTML image um, using the source which it's getting from here. Um, so let's just take a look at what happens here because it isn't quite what you'd expect. And you can see that my flow has failed to run because I am limited on the size of the message that I'm sending in this post. Um, it's limited to 28 kilobytes. Um, so I'm not even getting as far as working out what's going on. You can see that I've got this this source um, tag, this source property for this image tag here is 
kind of what you would expect, but generally you'd be looking at this and this would be an image content type. But in this case, this is not an image content type. But that isn't the issue that we're having here with this error. The error is simply driven by the size of the amount of data that we're sending through to it. So in example number four, we have a solution. And the solution is that we have to temporarily offload our image somewhere else. So we're going to take the output that we get from our download an image or file. And we're then going to use the OneDrive connector to create an image out of this output. And then OneDrive has a very useful action, which is to get a file thumbnail. That, that isn't delivering to us file content, that's actually creating a thumbnail which can be downloaded with an HTTP request elsewhere. Um, and that thumbnail, once you've created it, is available for, I think, six hours until it disappears. Now, just be aware that anyone with that, um, that address that's created by that, that thumbnail action is going to be able to view that thumbnail in the six hours that it's available. And then I've got exactly the same thing here, getting my profile and just sending a message in Teams using the URL um, value that I get back from the get file thumbnail. So that's the URL of the thumbnail that I'm creating here. So let's go ahead and test this. And jumping over to Teams, you can see that the message has arrived in Teams. But you may be thinking that doesn't solve the original challenge of how do you embed an image out of that Dataverse image column. So let's take a look at the last example. So in this example, we aren't working with the limitation that we have in Teams. We're actually going to send our image through to an email where it can be um, practically as big as we want it to be. And we are still doing the same first steps here where we're downloading our image, getting the body of that uh, image response and creating a file in OneDrive. And OneDrive has a very useful feature when you get back a file content from it. If you drop down the advanced options, you can see that what this does is infers content type. So let's just take a look at how this is going to work here um, and why it works. So let's test this. Okay, so that's run successfully. And you can see that we create the file as we did before we get back the same file content, um, which is this non-image content type. But then when we go to get the file content, you can see that because we've got the infer content type turned on, when it grabs that content, it is then changing that content type to an image, uh, which means that we then have a PNG file. We're able to come down here and construct um, our data URI using that function and send that through to email here. And you can see that I have the source property of this image tag be the output that we got from that data URI function. So jumping into our email, you can see here we have this image and this is embedded into our email as you would expect that to be. So now you're probably thinking, well, that's great, but what if you want to go the other way? What if you have an image and you want to use Power Automate to put that image into um, Dataverse? Let's take a look at those examples. So in this case, I'm gonna manually trigger this flow and I'm just going to choose the image that I've already stored in my OneDrive. So once we've got this added in here, let's just run this to remind ourselves of what the output is from this get file content using path. So you can see that I've got my image.png is the input here and my output is an object where I have the content type and then I have the content. So the content that I'm interested in is this content property that I've got here. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit and I'm now going to add a Dataverse step and I'm going to add a new row. So I choose the table that I've been using and I can just call this picture from OneDrive. I'm going to go ahead and go down to advanced options and then in the image field what I'm going to do is um, click on expression. I'm just going to put a space in here which will allow me to grab dynamic content. So I'm going to go back to dynamic content I'm going to grab this file content here and you can see I've got my file content 
and what I've got is my body but I want the content element that is below that body so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some brackets in here um, and then I'm going to put in content but I need to remember that there's a dollar sign in front of it so I'm going to click OK you can see there that's now grabbing that content as the image data that's going to go into Dataverse. So let's go ahead and test this. You can see that's worked. I've added my image into Dataverse. So let's just go ahead and go back and take a look at my table. And you can see I've got my picture from OneDrive in there with the image. So hopefully that's given you a good overview of how to use the image column type in Dataverse, whether you're accessing it from a model-driven app, from a Canvas Power App, or from Power Automate, um, and whether you're trying to add images or get images back out again. Drop a note down in the comments if there's scenarios with the image column type that I've missed, or perhaps you have a better way of doing some of the things that I've done in this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been useful. And until next time, bye-bye.